Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ronin of the Reach. It plays two to six players, takes about 10 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I would say 10 and up. In the game Ronin of the Reach, don't let it fool you, it's actually not a game about Ronin per se. It is a space tactics dexterity game in which you're gonna be piloting a ship, moving it around, dodging asteroids and mines, attempting to move and then fire by placing cards down face on the table and flipping up simultaneously, doing damage, hopefully, to your opponents. There's certain types of attacks, whether it be missiles that kind of swerve around certain objects or a straight up laser beam. It has a rock, paper, scissors type aspect when it comes to that. Some things will deflect certain missiles, others will let you move out of the way. And then if you both fire at the same time, maybe you'll both take damage. You get two HP in the base mode and you're playing against up to six players. If you're basically trying to survive the game, you need to destroy or at least avoid being destroyed yourself and being the last ship standing in the game Ronin of the Reach. Anyway, let's go ahead and take it down. I'll show you all the components and then after that I'll show you how to play. So here we have the game Ronin of the Reach and everything included in the game. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. First of all, you got the two to six player rulebook, explains everything you need to know about the game, as well as a bunch of different types of cards you'll be utilizing throughout the game. So let's go ahead and start and talk about all the different cards. Over here is the starting player card to begin the game. Everybody chooses a um, uh, one of these ships here, as well as we're gonna turn this thing around and spins, and whoever it faces will be the starting player of the game. There are six individual different types of ships in the game and you're going to be selecting any one of them and they all are basically the same but they have different uh, pictures on them to illustrate which one you're playing throughout the game. When you flip it over that means your ship has been destroyed and it'll be considered a, an asteroid for the rest of the game or a wrecked ship but you're going to start off hopefully on the nice side here. These are the asteroids and the mines over here so you get asteroids and mines and each player is going to select one of them and drop it somewhere down on the map uh, which is basically going to cause some obstacles in the way of players as they try and destroy each other. These cards over here are your damage cards. When you take damage for the first time, you'll flip over one of these cards to indicate you've taken damage. And if you take a second damage, your ship is going to get destroyed and it gets flipped over just like that. Once you've lost both of your HP, you're going to be out of the game. These are the separate player decks, and each player is going to get six cards, in which case they're going to be holding them in their hand the entire time, and they do different things. First of all, it could be lasers, um, as well as basically uh, what are these called missiles here. So you'll have lasers and missiles here, and then you'll have anti-lasers and anti-missiles. Lasers are going to simply shoot in a straight line and try and hit somebody, and missiles can kind of swerve around things and hit people. But, of course, if you have these cards that are being played, they can dodge those missiles and or lasers. These are special cards. First of all, this is a double movement card, so after you move your first time on your turn, you'll be able to move again, dodging missiles and lasers. And this one over here is your special ability card, which will let you use your special ability that you can only use once per game. So make sure when you use it, it counts the most. Each player will get the same identical set of hands, as well as, of course, as additional cards for up to six players here. These are actually these special cards that you can use throughout the game. They're like special super abilities that you use once per game. And they range from anywhere between EMPs and military combat computers. There's also a railgun, stealth, virus, memory booster, and other things that can help you win the game. But once they're used up, that's it. The card will still stay in your hand as a bluff, but otherwise it's no longer usable. These cards are for the extra variants. You're going to have, I think these are called capital ships here, as well as over here, these are large asteroids. You can choose to play with them or not in the game. They provide a different way of play. Additionally, there are these cards here, which are damage cards that will go on top of the capital ship when it takes damage and after a certain point in time that capital ship can be destroyed but this is pretty much what you're getting in the game Ronin of the Reach a tactical game that has a little bit of uh, placing cards face down and simultaneously revealing them to show players what you've got can you defeat all your opponents and be the last one standing in the game I don't know let's find out I'll show you how to play the game so here is a two player setup for the game Ronin of the Reach and as you can see each player has their hand of six cards I have the left and right player here as well as they have their damage card which shows that they have taken no damage but if they do they're going to flip over this card and it reveals that they've taken a single damage of their second point they have been destroyed uh, you put your special wherever you want I just went ahead and put these specials for each character right here and right here this is a special ability that can only be used once in the game and is going to be determined that you've used it once you go ahead and see this card here being played by a specific player they'll flip over their secret card and then gets discarded and that card will remain in their hand as kind of 
of a bluff for the rest of the game. So to begin, players are going to take their ships here, and they're going to simply go ahead and go one, two, three, and place it down some way, in some way, shape, or form. I've got these two guys here. He's facing this way. He's facing this way. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and take the starting player, and we'll just go ahead and cut the board right here in half. So this player's on this side, and this player's on this side, and flip. Okay, so it points this way. That means it's this player who starts the game off. And then you're simply going to go into the movement phase. And normally in a movement phase, you're going to go ahead and have two choices. If you're playing easy mode or hard mode. If you're playing easy mode, you're going to flick the guy. And then after that, you're going to be able to rotate it to how you want to rotate it to face. If not, you're simply going to leave it as to where you flicked it. And then the next player in turn order is going to go ahead and flick as well. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Ah, okay. After the movement phase has been completed, each player is going to simultaneously select a card from their hand and place it face down. And so for in this instance, he might place this card face down, and this player over here might go ahead and select something like, oh, I don't know, this card here. After that happens, in turn order, you're going to go ahead and flip over cards. So you flip over this one here, and then this one over here which will allow this guy to move, dodging these specific mo the <laughs> specific missiles that would normally hit him. But because he's moving, he's going to be able to dodge them. The other way to dodge missiles is anti-missiles. So he gets to go ahead and flip and move again. And this player here just simply loses this. When you lose your card, you're going to go ahead and put it underneath your, uh, your tracker here, your damage tracker here, to indicate that it has been used. Don't worry, though. As opposed to playing the card that is face down, you can simply take all cards back. Then you're going to move on with the starting player over to the player over here. And movement phase will begin. Simply go ahead and do that. And yeah. Okay, like that. And let's say during movement phase something interesting happens. Like, first of all, let's say that this ship actually lands on top of that mine. If that ever happens, if you ever hit a mine, you're actually going to take damage. So you'd go ahead and flip over your card like that. You don't let it happen more than once, though, because that's going to end you. Uh, and uh, if this guy went over here like that, this is an asteroid, which means that whenever he lands on the asteroid here, he's going to have to discard a card at random from his hand, meaning he's going to lose one of his options this specific round, and every round, furthermore, that he chooses not to take cards back. So let's just say that both of those things happened, and they're kind of like this. Okay, and once again, you're going to decide which ones you want to go ahead and play. This guy might play something like, oh, I don't know, this one here. And this guy over here might play something like this over here. And then you're going to go ahead and reveal. The first one's going to go ahead and be a movement as well, dodging that. And this guy here is going to shoot his, but unfortunately he dodged it. So these are going to go under once again. And the game basically just continues like that. Uh, for laser beams, however, oh, so he actually lost his laser beams. He had discarded it, unfortunately, this one here. If he went to use his laser, and let's say he was like this, his laser would actually fire based on where his ship is facing, and if it hits the guy, that is going to count as a hit. The only way to dodge lasers is basically the movement or the anti-laser cards. So in this instance here, this will dodge lasers, and this will as well. But if he had used missiles and he played a dot an anti-laser, he would actually take the damage, and vice versa, of course. The next round, it would be passed to this guy here. They would go ahead and make their moves again, and then uh, they both place a card face down but let's say that they both wanted to return so they had all these cards face up face down under this thing here uh, this guy before he flips his card over he can say actually i'm going to go ahead and take these cards back in which case this player here could decide to use this card or he could take his cards back as well so this is how you're going to get your actions back throughout the game uh, let's go and take one last look at some other interesting things in the game these are all the special abilities and this player let's say he wanted to use one of his special abilities right now he might go ahead and play this card face down, just like this. And uh, this player over here might do the same thing. In which case, they're going to go ahead and flip them over. These are the special abilities. These will be activated. This one here is called a virus. A virus lets you discard two cards from a player's hand, making them virtually useless for the next round. And this one over here is called a laser turret, which will allow you to go ahead and shoot not only from the front with a laser, but from either side or the back. It's a very useful one-time laser that can devastate your opponents. But once these are used, they're out of the game for good. But that's the basic idea of the game. Players are going to keep going back and forth, moving the starting player back and forth, playing cards down, choosing to get the cards that they had lost back into their hand, or simply flipping them over and resolving them in turn order. Whoever eliminates the other opponent's ship first is going to be the winner of the game, Ronin of the Reach. Let's go ahead and take it up and I'll give you my review. So let's talk about some caveats for Ronin of the Reach. And the first thing is that when a single player were to play something like a laser card here, let's say that their ship is blocked by an 
asteroid, in which case this is going to do damage directly here, and if there's another ship on the other side, it would completely block line of sight. So asteroids are going to actually block line of sights from ships shooting the laser beams. However, with missiles, missiles are able to kind of go around, they're heat sinking, so they have a lot of power. Additionally, lasers can only hit one target, so it's going to be that first thing it hits. So even if it sees two ships, it's going to simply pick off just the one ship that it chose to hit. Um, that's pretty much the main concepts of that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is player turn order. If I play an anti-missile and then you play a missile and I'm the first player, it doesn't matter in turn order as far as that goes. My anti-missile will block your missile that is being targeted at me, so I won't have to actually worry about dealing with that regardless of turn order. That's pretty much all i got to say about that. Now, first of all, what do I think about the game? Well, first of all, this is a dexterity game in which you're going to be flipping, flicking cards, and you need to flick them from the back. If you're not so skilled, I definitely recommend using the beginner mode, which kind of lets you rotate the ships kind of to angle them how you want to angle them, making it a little bit easier, or a lot bit easier, because sometimes you're going to want to have your ship go in a certain direction, and it's almost... It's very, very difficult to do so. That being said, the more professional way of playing the game is definitely a lot more fun and more realistic because ships aren't obviously going to be able to just simply rotate as much as they want, as quick as they want. So you have to kind of utilize the skill of your maneuvering to give yourself the ability to hit ships with your lasers. There's only two weapons in the game, really, along with your special. It's the lasers and it's going to be the missiles. And you're going to want to use them in a rock, paper, scissors kind of combat because there's three different ways to avoid those things. And there's that one wild, which is the move. And then, of course, there's a 50-50 as to whether or not they're playing a certain thing or not. Utilizing your special wild can come in handy at one point or another, as well as utilizing that wild card just in hopes that your opponent is thinking you're going to play a missile. You can play that useless card that usually would do your special ability, but because you no longer have one, it's now a good bluff. And remember, players are going to have to pull back eventually because you're going to run out of options. So if you have more options than your opponent, you're more likely going to do damage to your opponent, which is a very, very useful thing throughout the game. I like the fact that they have the capital ships as well and the unique style of play you can choose to play. I'm not going to go into that really. I just want you guys to go ahead and check out the campaign and see it for yourself so it gives you a little bit of extra stuff to, to why you'd want to take a look at the campaign for additional gameplay variants. One thing I want to say about this game is I really want these cards to actually be more like plaques. I want them to be like that I have a flicking game where you simply flick uh, these things next to a table and have them hit the table edge. Uh, they need to be thick, and I, I, so I don't mind them, but I feel like they're going to wear eventually if they're just basic cards. And especially on certain tabletops, it's hard to flick them. So if they were a little weightier, a little thicker, they're almost like cardboard stock, I, I would like that a lot better. And even if it was kind of gloss so that it remains... Uh, high quality. So that's kind of what I want to see in this game because I had a lot of issues with trying to flick them at certain points. This is a prototype. These are used components. So that being said, it's possible that it's just getting to be an old, you know, they're going to probably come with a better cardboard stock in general in the campaign, but I would definitely suggest taking a look at that and suggesting that if I were you. Not only that, there are the special abilities, and they range as far as whether they're more aggressive or more defensive. They have some unique different actions, and they come with quite a bit in the game. The game is going to get more complex, more complicated as you play with more players, but they have a lot of secret abilities. There's a lot of cool ones, like Memory Booster. Play a card from your discard pile so a card that you actually had previously played they're not going to see that coming very very good um, or the emp remove an opponent's secret ability from the game that's really good in a more than two player game in fact in a two player game i'd probably kick that one out there's certain abilities i would be like oh, i'd rather play with these in a larger player game in general the game is going to work better in a larger player surface specifically with more players in the game my little table here is not going to be appropriate enough in my opinion to be playing the game but you could you could and i have and i played it on my bigger table which i had a lot more fun with especially since the, the tabletop is definitely smoother you want a smooth playing surface you can't simply use felt for the game so that that goes to show as well overall though the game's fun i enjoy the dexterity aspect of the game i like the fact that you have different choices in how you play the cards and you're kind of playing chicken with your opponent seeing when you want to play certain cards and when you don't want to play certain cards and how you want to play them if you can flick really well your cards will move the ship exactly how you want them to and that's going to help you throughout the game so there's definitely a good amount of strategy there's very little luck in the game as long as you're very good at precision flicks as well as you're good at 
making sure you know what your opponent has played, so a little bit of memory, and what you know you have and what is in your discard pile and how you utilize your abilities. You think that two damage is going to go really quick, and I guess it can, but we've actually played a two and a three player game that lasted quite a bit because people were countering each and every player's different things. Uh, that being said, the game is a lot of fun. If you like flicking games, card flicking games, if you enjoy games that have the simultaneous action, so we can be flipping them over with a couple of little bluffs and secret abilities, this would probably be one for you to check out. Overall, we enjoyed this game, and I think you might like it as well if you like this style of game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ronin of the Reach, the 10 minute space battle game. If you enjoyed this review and you want to see more, go ahead and push like, subscribe, and comment, as well as hitting that bell notification button. It helps. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for taking a look at the Kickstarter campaign. Now, if you think you enjoy this, I definitely go ahead and suggest taking a peek at it for those of you who are flickers. As well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com, which currently have been waiting the game Santorini. It's on our website, which we have a rehaul hopefully in the next week or so. We'll see though. As well as our live streams. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. We're giving away games on there and having a lot of fun. There's a bunch of people watching and participating by helping out on Patreon, which we really appreciate. It. All right, guys. That's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to battling with you out in space with my Ronin-type spacecraft with you next time. <laughs>